I'm Julie Herman of Jaybird Quilts and Lazy Girl Designs and welcome back to the Lazy Angle Basic Series. This week we are working on the Stargazer Pillow. In our video yesterday, we went over fabric selection and cutting. And then today, I'm gonna to show you how to take those pieces that you cut and turn them into these Lazy Angle three-step blocks. Let's get started. In our first video, we went ahead and selected our fabrics and cut all our pieces. And now, we're gonna work on putting our block together. We're currently on page seven of our pattern. So we're going to take our A fabric and our B of our background, our right B, and we're going to place them right sides together to sew and make a square block. So we're gonna go ahead and put them right sides together and we're gonna create this little V here. We're gonna sew from that valley down to this valley. And this valley down here has little dog ears that are approximately gonna be the same size. And we're gonna make sure that we're sewing with our scant quarter inch. I went over this in our last um, project, our apple pie table runner and our beach ball baby quilt, but that just accounts for our thread and our seam allowance. So we're gonna head on over the machine and sew this seam. We're going to put A and B together. And as I showed you, we're going to have that little valley there, and that is a quarter inch in, specifically a scant quarter inch. I've discussed this before, but that has to do with your thread, as I mentioned, and you wanna make sure that you test your quarter inch if you've never done that. Um, please go check out my video from last week where I talk about testing your quarter inch. Then you're gonna end up with those two dog ears down here. And feel free to pin if that helps you keep things lined up. Um, I usually wait till I have the stage of putting my actual blocks together um, to do pinning. And if you have never made anything like this before, it can help to do a test block just to make sure that you're familiar with the shapes and how they go together. Often when I'm working on something like this that has four blocks, I will go ahead and chain piece them. But for today, and my suggestion to you, if you, this is new to you, is let's do one block at a time, and then once you've mastered the one, you can go ahead and do the other blocks. Now that I've pieced my A and B together, it's time to press the seam open. So I'm going to go ahead and finger press first. And I press all of my seams open because there will be things intersecting here, and I find it will all lay flat and best with our seams open. So I got my heat resistant stiletto. It is silicone on this end, so if it touches my iron, I don't get burnt, and it's better than using your finger. And I'm walking along my piece. When we press, we wanna go up and down. Ironing is moving along the surface. Pressing is up and down. We have sewn together two bias angles here, and we wanna make sure that we don't stretch that. So the best way to avoid that is to press it up and down, not iron. And there we go. Now we need to go ahead and recut this into a left A so that we can go ahead and add our left background B. A diagram of how to recut this is in the middle of page seven. One quick tip is if you're wondering where you need to be recutting, I always suggest taking your next piece and laying it on top of your block. We made a block like this for our apple to pie table runner, but for today, we want to make this block where it comes together as a point. So we're going to take our jumbo lazy angle ruler, and since we want a left A, we're gonna flip this to the wrong side, because we always cut our left pieces with our fabric wrong side up, and we're going to align it like this, and take our ruler and take our eight and a half inch straight line up and down here, and the base of our ruler down here, and one quick um, double check to ourselves, I'm gonna make sure that you can see it real well, one quick double check to ourselves, is that this point right here, where our lines come together, marking our seam allowance, should line up on this line. And that way when we add our next piece, we're not gonna lose our point and our point is going to be perfectly lined up in our seam allowance where we want it to be. So line up this eight and a half inch straight line, top of our ruler, base of our ruler, double check so that that is lined up there, grab our booster magnets and trim our block. Now, technically, this is scrap. You can go ahead and discard it or throw it in your scrap pile. You wanna make sure you don't confuse it with your B pieces because it is slightly smaller, and if you try and piece it into something, you will end up with the wrong size block. So just make sure you stick that in the scrap pile. So now we can go ahead, now that we have our left A and our left B, we are going to piece them together. 
So we're going to put them right sides together. And we're going to end up with that same valley up here that we ended up with for our first one. And now down here, we don't have our point because we've already started with a block. So we're going to be lining this up on top of the seam allowance from this one. And we're going to be making a tiny set of little bow tie right here. You can see. And same scant quarter inch to account for our thread. We're going to head over to the machine and sew the length of this seam. Just like when we pieced our original A and B, we're going to have that valley down here. And then up here, I showed you this a moment ago, but I'll show you close up. So you can see since I pressed it open, there's this piece that is underneath. And we're going to line up this with that. And it's going to create these little bow ties from the dog ear. And the little bow tie should be even on both sides. And we're going to go ahead and add this B to make this a two-step lock. And then we'll continue to make it a three-step. We've now sewn our left B to our recut left A, and we're going to press that. So at this point, we now have a two-step lock, and it is a different two-step lock than what we made last week for the Apple Pie Table Runner. As I mentioned, there are so many possibilities and variations of two-step, three-step, four-step, and so on blocks. Um, so we're just showing you a sampling here with this sew along. There are unlimited options in the Lazy and Loving It book as well as the many different patterns that are available from Lazy Girl Designs and Jaybird Quilts. So now that we have pressed that seam, here we go. And you could just stop here and make just a single star. It would be a lot of fun and a pillow, but for the purposes of Stargazer, we're gonna keep going and we're gonna turn this into a three-step lock. So now following the directions on page eight, we want to recut this to another left A so that we can add our left B so that this is the lazy angle block that we want to be making. And then we're gonna make four of these to make it into the star. So we need to recut this block. So I'm gonna slide this out of the way and I'm going to flip this onto the back because again, when we want to cut left shapes, we want the fabric wrong side up. And I'm going to go ahead and line up my eight and a half inch line. And I wanna make sure that this seam allowance line here right above the eight and a half, lines up with that point, so I don't lose that point, and that this line here lines up in that seam. Those are my two double checks to each other. So at this point, if your block is not perfectly square, more important than lining up the base of your ruler here or here perfectly, it is actually most important that you line up that point and then that point, and then hopefully everything else is close to where it should be. I'm off by about a thread there, and by about a thread down here. And I'm going to be okay with that because by lining up on my points, it's gonna make sure that my points stay in my finished block. I'm gonna go ahead and trim. And again, throw this in your discard pile. And now that we have that recut and we have this piece, we're gonna put them right sides together and head on over to the machine to finish our lazy angle block. Our block is almost complete. We have our recut left A and we have our left B. And now we're gonna go ahead and put these together. And this is what it's gonna look like at this end. We're gonna have that little bow tie of that little gray piece and green in my case. And then here at this end, this is not going to perfectly overlap on top of this. Um, you may be used to things like that happening when you're working with Jaybird rulers, like the Hexamore and Sidekick, Super Sidekick, but that's not the case with the Lazy Angle. So if this triangle is distracting you, um, you can go ahead and push it out of the way or you can trim it off. We just wanna make sure that this valley is a quarter of an inch from the raw edge. And here we go, this is what it looks like. So we're gonna go ahead and press this final seam open. And one quick note is I often do press with steam when I'm not recording. I'm, I don't have the steam on when I'm recording because it would fog up the camera. But now that we have multiple intersections where things cross over, um, those things will lay a lot flatter with steam. Um, so if you're a fan of steam, I suggest using that. Um, I will do that when I'm not recording. 
Again, we have all different bias edges on the inside here now. Our four corners, or I should say our four straight sides of our block are all straight of green, but we have a lot of bias in here. So we still wanna make sure that we're pressing and not ironing so that we don't in any way stretch out this block. We're gonna repeat those steps to create four of these blocks. And I'll be back here tomorrow to show you how to put them together to finish your pillow. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like it, share your comments with us, and subscribe to the channel. If you've not yet signed up for the Sew Along emails, you can do so at the link posted in the caption below. I'll see you tomorrow.